This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Dave McCann. What is up, BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, April 15th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the man who woke up this morning and vowed to be good this entire Good Friday, Dave McCann. It's great to be here. What a great weekend and what a great time of year. So it's Good Friday. Let's all be good. Absolutely. We can can all be better than we were last year, starting right now, all day today, and then let's try to take momentum into Saturday of of being good. Amen. We've got a a Good Friday show (laughs) ready for you. Uh, Jeff Judkins retires. Uh, what's his legacy? We'll discuss with Kristen Kozlowski and Steve Cleveland, who's the guy that brought him to BYU. Three coaches have left this week. Is this natural offseason attrition or something else? We'll discuss. Plus, number one UCLA is in town against men's volleyball, and we have a new school record in the 5K by Casey Klinger. Details coming up right now, starting with headlines. After 21 years as the women's basketball coach, Jeff Judkins announcing his retirement yesterday. Juddy has the most wins by head coach in BYU basketball history, men or women, 456. A winning percentage of 69%. Congratulations much more on Jetty this hour. Track and field continues competition at the Mount Sac and Brian Clay Invitational today. Throwers start up uh, at the Long Beach Invitational as well. Yesterday, the school record in the outdoor 5K was broken by Casey Klinger, who clocked a 13-23-33, breaking two-time national cross-country champion Connor Mance's record. What? Is that even possible? It's crazy, right? Then Kenneth Rooks put up the fifth fastest steeplechase in program history with an 832.75. Just records being broken like every meet. These guys are running all over the streets of Provo. They get ready for this. Shirtless, thing. always. <laughs> yeah. Baseball dropped the series opener at Nebraska last night, one to nothing. Just one hit for BYU in the loss. They only allowed three. The teams will play a doubleheader today. Game one at three Eastern, one Mountain. The call of the game on BYU Radio 107.9 here in Utah and around the globe at the BYU Cougars app. Men's volleyball hosts number one UCLA tonight in the final two matches of the regular season, tonight and tomorrow, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Cougars will honor Davide Gardini, Alex Asu, and Brandon Oberrender in their final matches in the Smith Fieldhouse. Of note, Libero Mitchell Worthington is returning next year for a fifth season. If I went with Davide McCann, would I be cooler? I think you'd have a little more flair to you. <laughs> I don't know about, about cooler, but flair. I'm yeah. going to think about it. Yeah. Alex Barcelo scored 14 points on 5 of 8 shooting last night in a Mike Duman win at the Portsmouth Invitational. Alex played 26 minutes, had two assists, a couple of rebounds. Going to play again tonight at 9 Eastern time. We wish him the best. Mike Duman Auto Group or something. <laughs> we we're saying it needs to be the Tim Daly Auto Group. Exactly. Paisley Harding signs a training contract with the four-time WNBA champion Seattle Storm. The Washington native said on Instagram, I'm coming home. Fantastic. Women's tennis at LMU today. They're seeking their third straight win. And the men host the Lions tomorrow in their home finale. Finals starting now on campus. Yep. It's that time of year. Things winding down. Good luck to all our students, notably uh, on our crew today. Best of luck with They're the already finals. They're got the game faces on. I, I don't know. They're running the camera right now. Uh, receiver signee Cody Hagan is the Utah Sports Commission High School Male Athlete of the Year. And Whitney Orton is the Collegiate Female Athlete of the Year after winning the cross-country national title. Congratulations. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Well, after 21 years, Jeff Judkins is retiring as the women's basketball coach at BYU. As you mentioned, Dave, the winningest coach on either program, who's been to two Sweet 16s, 10 NCAA tournaments, a ton of amazing accomplishments for Jeff. We love him. He's been awesome. So let's discuss the legacy of Jeff Judkins. Well, he hasn't said much except for a statement. We know he's watching because he loves this show and he loves you guys. Uh, So let's talk about him and he can hear us talk about him. And uh, We're not behind his back because he's probably just watching right (laughs) at at the TV. But here's a coach who, uh, who he won while being honest with his players. And, and the media, extremely, extremely patient, fiercely competitive, always gracious in defeat. And is that not the ultimate legacy? He won, he won, he won, he won. And on those rare occasions that he lost, he, he, was, uh, he was gracious in defeat. What a great coach. Like, we, we loved having Jody because it's fun personality. We felt like he was, uh, you know, like our grandpa on campus that we could just hang out with. And, and he was always in a good mood, but fiercely competitive, like you talked about. 
Um, and he won championships, um, which was awesome. And that is, we all want to have a good time and have a good relationship. That is enhanced if you win. The point is to win. And if you don't, you're not around for long. And the fact that he has been around for a long time tells you that he wins. BYU would go down to Las Vegas, and we hoped that the men could always snap that streak. Right. But what we really knew was that the women were going to compete for that championship and sometimes win it. And they have several times during his tenure. They've been to two Sweet 16s during Jeff's tenure. The men's basketball team has been to two Sweet 16s, period. Um, what he's done has been incredible. And to be able to recruit types of players that BYU's had has been awesome as well. They have this New Zealand pipeline going, yeah. which is super fun. Um, as like a rugby fan and just a fan of New Zealand, I'm like, yeah, more Kiwis. I love them. <laughs> uh, Shaylee Gonzalez is one of the best players in BYU history, and she's going to be here five years and break some records. She's been a dynamic player to watch. We saw the culmination of his career as well, by the way, in this last season. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off in the NCAA tournament, mm-hmm. but it was almost encapsulated in a single game, Dave, and I know you were there with Blaine watching this one. The Gonzaga game where BYU wore the black jerseys, there's the highlights, played in front of a school record 6,000 fans. It was one of the greatest moments in program history, and it was really a celebration and a great moment for Juddy to cherish of that final home game and they, at the BYU. And the curtain drop and all the fanfare. They finally the got always get. the same thing. They got yes. that treatment, yes. and uh, deservedly so. And you're right, it was, it was the biggest big-time moment, and then they went out and just pounded Gonzaga. Which was awesome, and that ended up being the best win of the year. Yeah. In, in that moment. So um, shout out to Jeff. And, and the, it plays into sort of this bigger idea of, and, and oh, by the way, I do want to mention tremendous, uh, like he's a Utah basketball hall of fame status kind of guy. Right. Amazing player at Highland, incredible player up at the U. And then he's on the Utah coaching staffs when they have Keith Van Horn and Andre Miller and Michael Doliak with Rick Majerus. Final four in 98, they go to the championship. He's an assistant coach on those teams. And then uh, we'll talk to Steve Cleveland coming up about kind of the story of getting him to BYU. But he comes to BYU, and he's involved with both the men and women, and then he takes the women's job. This wasn't sort of a a common thing or maybe the first thought he had, but this ends up being an incredible legacy that he has on a path that he didn't anticipate, which I think is a good life lesson. You kind of think you've got, this is what I'm doing. Right. But life takes you this way, and you can still have an amazing experience, and that's what Jeff did here. And 21 years. As a head coach, uh, and we, we were looking around campus, we're going, well, wait a second. Uh, how long has everyone else been around here? He usually was a journeyman of 21 years. Turns out he was like fourth on the list. <laughs> I thought he was uh, higher. Take a look at this. We, Bruce Brockbanks, the king, 30 years. 30 uh, he years. doesn't have to answer phone calls if he doesn't want. He's been here for 30 years. <laughs> Jen Rockwood, That's 27. Ed Eyestone, 22. Gordon Eakin at, uh, in his 19th, 20th year uh, with softball. Uh, BYU has been fortunate to have coaches. You know, think about Lavelle and how long he was here. Coaches that have not only come here, they put up with a lot, and they've stuck through it. And the great players that come through all these programs, uh, including Jetty's. Of note, and those were active coaches, Lavelle was here 29 years. Yeah. Bruce Brockbank's now been here longer than Lavelle was as the head coach. He's, That's pretty gnarly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. His so, team plays great. They're playing great this week at the intercollegiate. Took fifth place. Yeah. Golf team's coming around. You interviewed Carson Lundell last week. Yeah, That's he was incredible. here. And, and then he was just, they, they got things going. You know what soccer's got? They all have things going. Look at these coaches. Look what they're doing. It's fantastic. You have to win to stay here. Um, and, and obviously, we're about to enter a, a new sort of era with this. So, Jetty sort of puts a... a you know, a stamp on, he was there in like what year two of the mountain West. Yeah. And then he, he ends prior to the last year in the WCC. So he was basically that, that whole tenure of the mountain West and WCC for BYU women's basketball. A couple of weeks ago, he said he was coming back and then, uh, you know, maybe just something changed and he just thought this is good for me. I, I, he had a great season and, and there's a loaded roster coming back for whoever the new coach is. So there's winning, the winning is yes. going to continue no matter what because of Gonzalez and Gustin and, and that. Yes, guy. and I do want to mention notable names just uh, you know, off the top of the head. Lee Kamard on the current coaching yep. staff, perhaps Ray Stewart and Melanie Day as well. Uh, Dan Nielsen is an intriguing candidate down at U of Tau Valley. He was an assistant, sort of a Mark Pope-like move. Was on the staff, head coach at UVU. His staff's all BYU uh, people, by the way. Yep. And uh, so he'll be a strong coaching candidate should he apply. So It'll we'll see.
We'll see who it is. With the announcement of the retirement of Jetty yesterday, BYU's seen three coaches leave this week. In fact, three in four days. Yeah. Is this natural attrition in the coaching realm, or do you think it's something different? Well, the Mike Little one, uh, Littlewood one is certainly not natural. That was midseason. That was abrupt. That was personal reasons. There's more to that story, um, you know, that's, that's certainly not out, right? So that one, no. Chris Burgess is a natural attrition one. I want assistants to go elsewhere sometimes because that means they're desired. Right. If everyone stays the whole time, I wonder how good that staff is, frankly. Well, look at Lavelle's coaching tree. Yes. And, Plucked and, off, and OC. Former yes. Former players, former coaches. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and then uh, Jeff, of course, um, has been here a long time. At some point, he was going to retire. So yeah. I don't think there's like any kind of movement or mutiny. There's nothing like that. But certainly you have to wonder, um, you know, the role of sort of the Big 12 in this. And I don't think it played into these particular – I think they're all individual cases that just happen to stack up. Now, if like two more coaches suddenly leave today – Maybe that conversation is different, but I, I think this is sort of um, individual cases. This is the season of the portal, and this is the season where coaches look around. We, we typically see movement in basketball after the Final Four when they've had their coaches' convention and made all these contacts and this and that. And, and uh, you know, Mark Pope's going to hire someone, so somebody's going to leave somebody's staff right. uh, somewhere else. And so this is that time of year of movement. Baseball's different. I think this one's a, a little more devastating a year out from the Big 12, and, and I think that'll have lingering effects. Um, but, uh, but the other two, um, women's basketball's position to keep winning, thanks to Jetty and, and his current group. And then uh, yeah. uh, I think it's a great opportunity for Mark Pope to get some new blood into that group. And... Uh, and uh, we'll ask Steve Cleveland who he thinks he should get. Uh, that's coming up. I'm surprised BYU was able to keep uh, Figure Robinson Burgess for three years. Yeah, honestly, I think that's a pretty good stat because they've they've been really good, you know. And and, yeah. and their best year was the COVID year where they didn't get a finish. Uh, right? and, and maybe that's why they were able to hang on to some guys. Perhaps like everything just stopped. Because the moment that uh, you know, if and when Mark Pope you know goes to a Sweet 16, Mark's going to get offered a big time job that could be the next gig we don't know yeah. we don't know but that's the cost of being great like when austin collie left after his junior year i was like dang it austin collie but we got the 08 season and 1500 yards and 15 touchdowns like i'm okay with guys going early and coaches bouncing if you give us greatness if not then it's a little harder to swallow like people had a harder time with eric meek and elijah bryant going early because they weren't drafted right but they were very good um, but we didn't get like a, a season where it's like, yep, we went to Sweet 16. I'm cool if you leave. Um, you know, if Jim Fredette was a junior in National Player of the Year and BYU went to Sweet 16, we all would have been like, hey, we get it. Yeah. We get it. But we're sort of used to, uh, nope, give us four years or do something incredible. Otherwise, you can't leave. It's like, well, it's a different era. You know what we haven't seen a ton, Dave, is players leave from BYU to go somewhere else for right. a better opportunity. Matt Carlino was kind of the only one. Yeah, Francis um, Bernard. Francis Bernard but that left. was a whole set of circumstances. Right, there was off the field different. issues there, but we, we haven't kind of seen that here. Sometimes we forget, too, that uh, kids come to college so they can get a job, and sometimes that job comes earlier than, than the diploma. Baylor Romney t went pro with Adobe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and coaches come to BYU because they have a job, but we all want better jobs, and sometimes there's a better job. For Steve Cleveland going to Fresno State, was a better opportunity for him and his future. And people go, that can't be possible. It was possible. Even though it didn't work out the way he wanted at Fresno State, right. but he finishes 30 years in the California education system and a pension that's going to take him into the twilight. But there's all these things where... Well, I didn't know where, that. That's where, awesome. Where we come here... That's why I left. When we come here... <laughs> uh, uh, we, we come here to get better, and sometimes it's to get a better job, and students come here to get a job, get educated, no matter what the department is. And, and sometimes, for Tyler Algier, let's hope that comes later this month. Amen. Yeah. Okay, our question of the day. As a BYU fan, is it concerning to see three coaches depart, or is it natural attrition? Let's hear from you and Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Wait on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you put it on our MySpace page, we won't see it because it doesn't exist. True Blue, no, on Instagram. Natural attrition, and all three were way different scenarios. BYU has never been in a better position to attract great coaches with the Big 12 and additional funds to pay them. I wonder if those funds are being used now or if they're going to wait until they get paid to use them. That's typically the BYU way. Back to uh, what you were saying. 
I think sometimes we think a coaching job here is a calling. Sometimes. It is not. No. There's no nobody's making it manifest. You know, although we all make it manifest in a touchdown signal when BYU <laughs> scores, but this even isn't even a if calling. it's implied, even if it's implied from who's hiring you, right? That's not true. It's that's a not it's a business. It's a job. But we, we'd like to think that people stay longer at BYU and for cheaper because they love BYU and love living that, here. Yes, yeah. it's certainly a, a wonderful and amazing place. We are two people that obviously have been with BYU for a while. You much longer than I. Of like, yeah, this place is special. We want to be around. And Juddy made that commute from Salt Lake for 21 years. 21 years. He's not from making it today. From Pac-12 country. <laughs> Coming up, the black and royal swag hits the recruiting trail for BYU football. And Kristen Kozlowski played for Juddy, has covered the team for a long time. Her perspective on Jeff Judkins and who she thinks might be the next person. This is BYU Sports Nation. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. Dally Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Dally Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Dally Ford in Spanish Fork. Four teams, all with the same purpose, to find family and make meaningful connections. Relative Race, driving families together. Hi, I'm Andy from The Fixers. Watch all new episodes commercial free this April on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Men's volleyball takes on top-ranked UCLA tonight at the Smith Fieldhouse, 9 o'clock Eastern time. You can see it live on BYU TV and on the app with Jeremy and Steve Vale. They'll play it again on Saturday. Number one in town. Usually we're the number one. Right. And they come to town. Yep. Not the case. I, uh, I love when BYU plays UCLA. Those are always fun matches, so let's go. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. Jerem Jordan alongside Dave McCann. We now go to Las Vegas with Kristen Kozlowski. She didn't have enough with the WCC tournament, so she's gone <laughs> back just to bang on the Orleans doors and see if they'll let her in. Kristen, how you doing? Good. Good to be with you guys. Of course, back to Vegas again. I feel like this is my second home here a lot, for sure. Here this time, I'm here with my son for a basketball tournament. So. Yeah, luckily luckily a different uh, setting, right? But still basketball. That's what takes us to Vegas uh, most of the time. Or in Dave's case, he can go for any reason. He lives Vegas is awesome. Years. Yeah, <laughs> Vegas is awesome. So Jeff Judkins news yesterday. Uh, he retires. Was this out of the blue for you or expected? I had had numerous conversations with him this season about the possibility, not necessarily this year, but coming soon. I think that it was in the back of his mind that it needed to come sooner and rather than later, but uh, no indication that it was going to happen this year in every conversation when I talked to him. So when I heard the news, I think I knew it was coming. I just didn't think it would necessarily be this year. I thought maybe he would write it out until the big 12, maybe tell Shaylee was a senior and she graduated a um, little bittersweet for me, for sure to, to hear that because I'm happy for him. He goes out on top. One of the best, coaches of all time, obviously at BYU, but at the same time, 
I mean, it's not going to be the same without Jody on the bench over there. And I've had a great relationship as a player and then also broadcasting for him to be able to go talk to him. It was just easy for us to have that relationship continue. So you come to BYU and redshirt the year. They go to the Sweet 16, and that team was honored this past season. Uh, and you had a chance to go out there during one of our broadcasts and, and be with that group. Uh, what, what was your greatest coaching moment as from a coach to a player in your relationship with Juddy that you remember? Uh, and, and it'll go back to kind of the relationships, not necessarily on the court where you remember the games, right? The wins, the losses. Uh, not many know this, but I knew Jed before BYU. I had developed a relationship with him because he coached and recruited my brother to play under Rick Majerus and him at the U. So my older brother, Brad, played for Majerus and for Judkins. So our family knew Judd when he got the job and came to BYU. And I knew at that point I wanted to go play for him. So it started well beyond uh, BYU. But when I came to BYU, he was very good about recognizing, hey, you're coming off an injury. You're transferring in from Boise State. But you are a part of this program. We want you a part of this program. We see a future with you and you being a big part of what we want to do to be successful. Um, so Judd did a really good job, I think, with every player. It didn't matter if you were a player that didn't get a lot of minutes or if you were a starter, just making you feel important. And I think that goes back to who he is. You know, you have this legacy of wins and losses that we talk a lot about. He'll be remembered for. But as players, we're going to remember more of the culture he created as a family, we all feel like family. We all feel like this is a home for us. And it doesn't matter if we played one year here, if we played three years here, if we transferred in or came in as a freshman, he created a culture of just a loving family. And he was kind of the head of that family. And I think as a player, you can go to him at any time. He wanted you successful on the court as well as off the court. How has he evolved as a coach from when you got him in like year, what, two, uh, when you started playing and you were in year one, to year 21 as a, as a, now you watch him as a broadcaster. Well, he's, he's lost some hair. That's for sure. And he'll be the first <laughs> to tell you that, that the stress has caused maybe a little bit more baldness than he would have liked. But um, I think he's softened for sure. I think he came in from the men's side of things and coaching the women was very different. Yeah. Uh, you have to be a little bit more emotionally in tune with some of those girls. You can't get in their face. You can't yell at them. Sometimes you really had to figure out a balance of being connected to them on the court, off the court, you know, they got stuff going on in their lives that might be affecting them emotionally on the court. And so he did a very good job of that. I feel like he adapted quickly from the men's game to the women's game to come in, form relationships and be invested in those girls. And it, and it went as far as, you know, like right now, I, I know I've been connected to him as a broadcaster, but every time I see him, it's not all basketball. It's not the game plan. It's talking about my kids. It's talking about my husband or my family or how I'm doing, how my parents are doing, how's my parents' health. Then it just shows you the level in, of investment he had. One thing that this is not is a coach leaving because he doesn't have any good players and the program's flatlined and he's getting out. He's got a tremendous roster that's returning next year, including Shaley Gonzalez and Lauren Gustin. So who should the new coach be? What kind of person should they go find to continue the winning with the roster that's returning? It's a unique job, right, at BYU and for the level that, you know, the coach has to come in and a standard to live by and, and all of that. So obviously they're going to open it up nationally. They'll open it up, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of of people putting in their resume, coaches that really want this job. This is a great institution. This is a great conference, the WCC, one more year, and then we're going into the Big 12, so a great opportunity. But I also think you got some in-house ones, and we're already seeing Lee Kamard's name thrown around. Ray Stewart's a great coach. Melanie Pearson Day. You've got some great ones in-house. And I think at the top of that list that you're hearing a lot right now is Lee Kamard, who played at BYU. Judkins brought him over after Dave Rose left, and and I think Lee proved himself back in November when Judkins was out with COVID and Lee had to step up and kind of take over and, and run the team, picked up a couple big wins that week in November. But I think there's a lot of great candidates. I think there's some former players that can even be considered. And, and so it, that question will remain, I think, for the media and for us. We're going to evaluate that and go, who's the next fit guy? But ultimately, I think, you know, Tom Homo will do a great job and Brian Santiago and the administration to find the right fit for this program. Thoughts on Dan Nielsen at UVU? I think Dan's a great guy. And, and you know, Dan 
left to go take on that UVU job, which will help him. I think it's a stepping stone that adds to his resume to now if he wants to come back. Um, and so Dan would be fully qualified, I think, to come in and take the job and do a fantastic job. He's done a great job over at UVU just down the street, but well-respected with the girls, well-respected in the community. He's proven himself, aside from being under the wings of Jeff Jetkins, I feel like, and that's what he needed to do. He needed to leave for a little bit to be able to have an opportunity to come back. So I think he would be one that would be high on the list as well. It'll be interesting uh, because the, the team is – as we mentioned a moment ago, this, this is going to be a good team. Probably picked to win the league again next year with Shaley Gonzalez. What's this like for the players as they sit around? We know recruits are coming in still, but the players sit around and wonder who the next head coach is going to be. I think the initial was probably a little bit like my reaction, just bittersweet, knowing that uh, it was probably time. Judd's going out on top, so you're happy for him. But at the same time, these players are, are a little bit uncertain of the future what happens now what happens in a couple months are we going to have a coach sooner rather than later and kind of run the same system is it going to be someone completely different that's a little bit up in the air and so some uncertainty for sure with these players I think it's also maybe a little refreshing to be able to go okay well somebody new you know coming in maybe that brings a little bit of energy to some of these players in the program but it's hard when you have such an established figure in your life like Jeff Judkins that knew you so well, knew your tendencies, you were you were comfortable with him, right? So it's going to force these players to be a little bit more uncomfortable. Now, if they bring someone in-house, then it's an easier transition. But also, someone like Dan Nielsen, as you mentioned, Jerem, I don't think that would be such a huge transition because he was taught under Judkins. He runs the same system on defense and offense. So coming in, there's not going to be a ton of change-up for these players if it's a coach like Dan Nielsen that gets the job or Lee Kamart. I'll be surprised if it's not Dan or Lee, but you did mention there's some former players. Uh, who's who's in the mix, uh, former players? Because certainly, uh, you know, a woman as the head coach would be a great move as well, potentially. Yeah, the one player that comes to, to mind for me, uh, she's up at Lone Peak right now, and I played with her, is Nancy Warner. Uh, Nancy was a great player for Judge. She played at Bountiful High School. And she's been in the likes of Springville High School where she's won state championships. She just won a state championship with the Lone Peak Girls program this last year. Um, I know that she's a player that Judkins has been after a little bit in terms of when he was in transition for assistance. He'd call her and try to get her, you know, maybe on board. And it just wasn't good timing for her. And, and right now with Nancy, I don't know the situation and if it's something she'd want to commit to or if she's even in the talks right now looking at it. But She's the one player that comes to mind. She's been very successful at the high school level. A great mind for the game. She was a great player here. She grew up with a coach in her dad, Gary Selyus, who coached a long time at, at Bountiful High School. So that's the one player I, I'm thinking of that, in my mind, would be a good fit as well. Yeah, All right. she's crushed it. Yeah. And, and that's Zach Selyus' sister, for those who... Older sister, yep, who played BYU. Hey, it's the weekend down there. Go over to Mandalay Bay. Get out there in the wave pool. Have a great Friday afternoon. The wave pool's legit. Yeah. Yeah. We have a good lazy river right where I'm at. The kids are enjoying that. It's nice weather. It's good to be in Vegas. Fantastic. Thanks for being with us. Kristen Always. Koslowski, our basketball analyst. A lot of change coming. Great point on Nancy Warner. I, I had forgotten because she has won a bunch of state titles, one of the best coaches in Utah high school girls basketball. She's a top candidate as well. So we shall see. So Dan Nielsen, Lee Kamard, Nancy Warner, those are three great candidates right there. So who, whoever it's going to be, it's going to be a good coach. Those are all good coaches. Coming up, another good coach, Steve Cleveland, tells us why he hired Juddy at BYU back in the day in 1999. Plus, what the former coach thinks men's hoops should look for in a new assistant to replace Chris Burgess. And wait until you see the BYU football coaches recruiting drip. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know you love a good drip. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001.
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. There's something new every Sunday in April on BYU TV. Really? Thank you. New adventures. When we walk together, we can do anything. New connections. I could feel the love immediately. New wishes. I wish I had another chance. New hope. Oh, that's great. It's a miracle. New friendships. Let's go move a house! Gather the family and make some new memories Sundays in April on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. He is Dave. I am Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. The whip round presented by Marisk, an integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU football tweeted out pictures of the gear the coaches are wearing as they hit the recruiting trail. Uh, which piece of this recruiting swag would you like to have? Mars Blackman said it best. Got to be the shoes. I love those shoes, man. The royal and black. Ah, oh, amazing. That's a good look. Why would you not come and play for those coaches when they show them that stuff? Yeah, seriously. nothing else. It's like, hey, you guys look great. Seriously. Will Paisley Harding make the Seattle Storms roster? I hope so. She's number six in scoring all time at BYU, number three in career three-pointers, number 12 in assists, one of the greatest all-around players in the history of the program. Uh, should that be good enough to make the WNBA? I think it should. Hopefully. I hope. They've got 19 players listed. She's one of them, by the way. Um, typically in a season, WNBA carries 11. So it depends how many rookies they want to keep and how many guards. There's seven rookies on the roster. So certainly it's going to be a challenge. But uh, hopefully she makes it. That'd be great. BYU hasn't had a player in the WNBA in a minute. For men's volleyball, is tonight more about upsetting the number one UCLA or being competitive as this young team in a rebuild? The point is to try and get hot next week and win the tourney and go to the NCAA tournament and shock the world. Uh, the 8 seed UCLA in 06 did it. The 7 seed UC Santa Barbara did it in 2011. Like, it's been done before. Granted, BYU starting a true freshman setter in his second game ever, first home game tonight, Noah Hain. I think go and compete, see if you can't shock UCLA. They did lose to Stanford, who's kind of similar to BYU recently. BYU took Stanford to the limit. Right? UCLA had 28 services. If UCLA serves it out of bounds, BYU's got a shot. Okay. Trevor Nell posted a video from a Papa shot at Nickel Cade, where he can be found every Tuesday night. No, just kidding. <laughs> was he over under 36% like he was this season in the video? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just hope he knocks down threes next year. Uh, he has had moments in games where he's lights out. He needs more of those moments. Yeah. If that little game helps him, so be it. Although the uh, arc is always limited in those. <laughs> yeah. the, you, honestly, I, I love going with my kids to those. But your forearm gets worked so hard in pop yes, shots. It's like all about crazy. How many yeah. shots can you get up? Will Jeff Judkins take the signed frame photo of you and Spencer or leave it in the office for the next head coach? Take a look at this. We got some for your dad. Us. <laughs> I love it. I will sit it right here. Why don't you hang it right here? Yeah, yeah you can put it right, right, by, over, right over Shaq. Right by Shaq. That would be yeah. awesome. Boom. I might do that. We'll I'll put it on my desk yeah. and start. How's that? I love that you guys you walk around right taking right pictures yeah. of yourselves. You must be real funny because I got my wife right here. <laughs> right here. Right there. You can see. From 2017. Really I think that's the only time we've done that. Maybe one other time. Look at that. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is he going to take it home? I have no idea. I hope. You know what? If he throws it in the trash, I just don't want to know. It's He's, like when I handed out a Book of Mormon on my mission. I just don't want 
want to see. I'd prefer you he's read it. He's taking that thing. Pray off. about it, but uh, yeah. he might put it out in the barn where the horse is, where he can see it. But he's taking that. They'll thing. trample all over. Coming up, a rise and shout out to a historic day and an historic career. And Steve Cleveland will join us to talk BYU hoops transition for women's and men's hoops with head coaches, assistant coaches. This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Now this is entertainment. Kind people working hard. <sighs> Those power tools really stress me out. Back in my day, we didn't have power tools. We had sticks, and stones, and uh, polio. Great. Now I'm thinking about polio. I've had it three times. <coughs> oh no. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball with a doubleheader at Nebraska today. Game one starts at 3 Eastern, 1 Mountain. Game two will follow about 30 minutes afterwards. You can listen to both live on BYU Radio 107.9 in the great state of Utah or on the BYU Cougars app all around the world. If this was in Provo, BYU would have to have Tanner Mangum throw out the first pitch to Mitch Matthews. Yeah. If it was against Nebraska, right? And Matthews would have to be in deep left field. <laughs> you just chuck it up <laughs> and he catches it. And then Taryn Houck up, hugs the umpire. That'd be funny. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation in Studio B. Jerem Jordan alongside Dave McCann. Let's now bring in Steve Cleveland to offer some perspective on what's happened with coaches this week. Not to mention, he's the guy that brought Juddy to BYU in the first place. Cleve, how you doing, man? Good, guys. Good to talk. Good to talk. Long time no uh, talk. So let's talk about Jeff Judkins, obviously retiring yesterday. We thought that maybe this would happen after this season or in the next couple of years, but when it happens, it's still shocking. It's like, oh, my gosh, uh, Juddy's, Juddy's reign of awesomeness is over with BYU. Tell us about the origins of getting Juddy to BYU. You know, it's kind of a unique situation because uh, I, I knew Juddy a little bit, but it kind of all started with a phone call that I received from him uh, one evening, kind of late in the evening, and it was, uh, I think it was early 2000. He was at Utah, and, and uh, maybe 99, actually, I think about it. But anyway, he was at Utah, and he called me, and he said, hey, coach, <clears throat> I'm not, I know we don't know each other that well, but I said, uh, kind of, I love what you guys are doing. And uh, he said, I, I, I need, it's just time for me to leave Utah. And it was shocked me because they had, you know, we had been climbing that mountain and competing against them, but recruiting against them. And it was a difficult time to come in for uh, rebuilding a program when uh, Utah was so powerful and well coached and Juddy and that whole staff was outstanding. So it kind of caught me off guard. We, that initiated a few conversations and over a period of several weeks and a, and a couple of months, uh, you know, we, we, what I told him, I said, I'll do everything I can to try to give you an opportunity here. But I, I said, I don't have any, you know, full-time coaching positions. And uh, I worked with the administration and we ended up actually creating a position that was a consulting position, not just for the men, but for the men and women. 
So he had exposure to both programs and uh, it began a great relationship. And uh, Jody and I have been good friends for a long time and I am so happy for what he's done. I figured it sooner than later that he was gonna retire. Uh, just making that commuter back and forth from Salt Lake uh, every day I had to get old, but uh, he did special things. He's a great man. I, I'll tell you, he helped me. Uh, I, I got another perspective and I think with coaches, you're, you're always looking for opportunities to learn. And, and we had played Utah enough to know what they were doing, but it was the little things, the preparation for games, the attention to detail, some of those things that I'll always really remember about Jetty and, and in terms of helping me personally in, in that setting. And then we just became good friends. And uh, I've been pulling for him for a long time and really happy and excited about an amazing career and uh, all the good he's done. He just, he's a, He's a good person, and I, I love the fact that he had a culture of really connecting with his players. And they, I know just from things I've read, they love him. And uh, I've always felt that was an important thing in the programs we had. So we had that in common right from the get-go. You gave him some good advice uh, after he got here uh, because he'd never coached women's basketball. And there was an opening that developed – and uh, tell us about the conversion of Juddy from the men's game to giving the women's game a try. And then, of course, he stuck with it and has been head coach for 21 years. You know, it, it was interesting. He, one of the most candid things that he asked me as we sat down one day, and he said, if I take this women's job, do you think that uh, I have an opportunity to get back in and coach with the men? And I said, Juddy, I can't tell you that for sure. But if I know you and what you're going to be about, you're going to commit and be all in. And I said, to be honest with you, this may not be what you want to hear, but I said, I don't think you're going to transition back to the men. I think you had that experience as an assistant coach at Utah and here at BYU with us. You've done great things. I said, you got, you got to commit. you got to be all in. You can't be thinking that, hey, down the road in two or three or four months or years that I, I can jump back into the men's game. And I think he listened to that counsel, and I think that he uh, he was all in from that point in time. I just I didn't want to try to <clears throat> keep his hopes up that he would be a men's coach, whether it was at BYU or wherever, when I knew that if he were really to put his whole heart into this thing, he could have an amazing career with the women, and he has. And uh, I'm not sure he, that's what he wanted to hear, but uh, he he followed my advice, and I just said, you need to go for that, Juddy. That, that, this is a great opportunity. You can have a great influence. And, uh, and he did, and congrats to him and all of his staff members. And he's had some amazing players there. They've been a, unbelievable, and they had the greatest regular season in program history last year. 456 wins, 10 NCAA tournaments, two Sweet 16s. I mean, not bad for a Ute, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You know what? It, it, it doesn't surprise me because he, you know, first of all, he was a, a great high school player. He was a great college player. He played in the league. Uh, he had so many influences in his life and good coaches that helped him. And, and I, I think that his time in Utah, well, you know, I, I don't think it was always perfect for him in Utah, but I, you know, some of the things he learned there helped me. And uh, he, he, he was mentored by a lot of people in this process. And I think that the, the most important thing about Juddy is his ability to communicate and uh, motivate young people to play at a level that maybe even they didn't feel they could play at. And, and certainly you can't have success unless you can recruit. And hey, he was, re you know, when we got to BYU in 1997, you, you know the circumstances and it, it was really difficult to go into homes and, and to, to recruit against him and that program. And they were a final four team, <laughs> but uh, we eventually figured it out. And by the time we figured it out, Juddy was still in Utah, but coming in, uh, you know, I always told him, I said, this is the most difficult thing I've ever had to do, is to go into a community, into a state where uh, it was so difficult to recruit early on. But we got a couple key people and it worked out. And, and certainly Juddy was involved in our program for about 18 months. And uh, he made great contributions in terms of X's and O's and, and also obviously in recruiting. Visiting with the great Steve Cleveland this morning here on this uh, Friday. Coach, how hard is it for a coach to come to the conclusion that his or her coaching days are over and it's time to be done? It's difficult. 
<laughs> I can tell you that right now. Uh, just from personal experience, I, and I can remember even my, my journey uh, as a high school coach for 12 years and not sure what my next step was. And uh, I just felt, you know, and I, 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 so I pursued a junior college job and was very fortunate to get it. And the, the, the experience of going to BYU was amazing. And Fresno State was much more difficult because of a lot of the sanctions and things that happened that were, were made it more challenging. But I, I can just remember at that time, uh, just talking to my wife and thinking about it and praying about it. But I just knew in my gut that it was time. And, and, and that was hard. And I, I, you walk away, the thing you walk away from and the most important thing to me was just being in practice every day. I mean, the games were fun and all the energy and the preparation for them, but really where my heart was, and I know Juddy and most good, you know, most coaches that are in this business for a long time, it's about your relationships. And that's what Juddy was amazing with. And so, you know, when you're walking away from that every day and getting that interaction, you, there's a void in your life. You've got to fill it with other things. And uh, Juddy will do that, whether it's with his horses or other things that he does, but he'll, he'll notice and feel a void uh, next year at this time when uh, the, the team is going to the NC2A tournament and things are happening and you kind of long for that, that feeling. So it, it's not easy, you do miss it, but uh, you, you just have a different perspective. And I, I know that for me, and I'm sure for Juddy as well, when, when you do kind of step away from it, there is a void in your life. Little anecdote on uh, Valentine's Day. I went to practice uh, this year. He had brought roses for every one of his girls on the team, the women, and uh, he got really emotional, uh, saying, "Yeah, I love you guys. You guys are uh, super light in my life." And so, maybe he knew late in the season, um, and and he offered some perspective, you know, of kind of feeling that maybe this is it, or maybe I have another year or two. But he knew that it was it was getting near the end. Let's talk about um, you know th- what BYU should look for in this. We talked about it earlier in the show with Kristen as well. Obviously, Lee Kamard is a notable candidate currently on the staff. Dan Nielsen was on the staff. He was at, he's at UVU as the head coach down the road. Sort of a Mark Pope-like move, potentially. Maybe someone outside there. What should BYU look for in a replacement for its all-time winningest coach? Well, I, I mean, first and foremost is having connections and recruiting connections and having the ability. I, I think all, all of those people, I mean, no matter who they bring in, it's going to be somebody that has experience and that can coach. And, 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 you know, in Lee's situation, he's not been a head coach, but he's certainly been around the game for a long time. And, and other coaches who, you know, the coach at UVU, he's obviously has a program over there. But I, I think really important to this is recruiting to this institution. The one thing Juddy's done, he's made it really, really okay to come to BYU. I mean, they've had great success. So I don't think it's a big stretch. Hey, take a chance on us. That's, that's not the circumstance. you got a great program. But certainly recruiting is really important. And I have never coached women, but I've been married to my dear wife for a long time. I've got a daughter. And, and they're raising a daughter and raising a son are two very different things. And, and so, you know, relationships with players, having that culture and having that trust, you know, it, the, the players in that program right now uh, are always going to, whoever comes in, are going to compare them to Jetty a little bit. And that, that's, that's a difficult thing to measure up to because he's had so much success there and, as you said, bring, whether it's bringing flowers or taking the time when somebody's really struggling and come into your office and help them through whatever issues they have in their life, uh, you can't create that immediately as a new coach. And so you do the very best you can to establish relationships in a culture where there's trust and it's a player. Uh, the thing I love about Juddie's teams and, uh, and any, any coach that's had success is he's had player-led teams. He's had really good leadership in his program and that makes all the difference in the world <clears throat> and Juddie's empowered them so those are character traits if I'm sitting down in an interview and I'm going to be talking to a candidate I'm, I want to know what they believe in and what they you know the things that are important to them uh, I think X's and O's and wins and losses certainly experience I think plays a role but I think more importantly is how are you going to connect with this team and how are you going to continue at this level and what's your recruiting plans? What are you going to do in terms of reaching out? I mean, they're going into the Big 12, too. <laughs> and uh, last I saw that both those the wins and women's programs are really difficult. It's got to get to another level. I think one of the things I was talking to a good friend the other day, whether it's women or men, is that the portal is a wonderful thing. 
and you can fix problems there. You can you can fill in spots, but establishing and building a program long term that's been done by Juddy in a very very good way. You've got to continue that. You've got to build it and have a foundation. And then and what, whether it's local kids or kids from around the country, it doesn't matter. But you you got to develop, have time to develop players. And I think sometimes as I watch the the, the the scenery around college basketball is we're just we're, we've got a lot of one and dones, and it's it's hard to really develop talent. I understand that you can really fix some immediate problems, but I think long term for both those programs, they have to be into developing players, developing programs, because they can win. You know, the Big 12 is is an ominous thing right now, but if you have 22 and 23 year old for young men, you know, seniors and juniors, or you have women that have been in the program, that's how you make up from maybe not having the depth or having the talent level, but you have a core group of people that are together, understand the program, what's being done. So I think long-term, that's what I would be looking at if I was an AD or an assistant AD. How are you gonna you know, establish this and getting to the next level? Because there is a significant jump in a year at, at both with the men and the women. Speaking of the men, let's say you're uh, back as the head coach and uh, you just lost Chris Burgess to the University of Utah. Who are you going to get to replace him as the men get ready for the Big 12? Well, I'm going to want someone that has some experience that's recruited, you know, around the country. Now, Mark, you know, the one thing about Mark is he possesses a lot of those character traits. But I think if, if Mark, I don't know what he's – what. Coach Pope is going to do with, is he going to bring a younger guy in and then bump everybody up? Because these are coaches he's been with for quite a while. Uh, but, I, but I definitely would want someone that uh, is recognizable, that has experience, that can come in and have an immediate impact, and that they can go into a home. So, you know, I, I'm not saying that they have to have been an NBA player or won a national championship, but I, I think it's important that you, you bring somebody in that can do all the things you expect them to do, but that that opening day, the, the when you hire someone, the recognition and knowing that, hey, here's somebody that's been there. They've been a great collegiate athlete. Maybe they've been professional. Maybe they've been involved in different programs. But I, I do think you need to have some experience here. I, I think just in preparing for the Big 12, and uh, I know some of the candidates, and I, I think many of them would be wonderful fits at BYU. But it is something for me that I would want to get somebody that can help me go recruit and be on the road. And I think Chris has been able to do that. I think that's one of the voids that you need to fill. That's really important immediately because I think they're going to have the opportunity for the, I'm just speaking about the men that I know a lot more about than maybe the women, though I did watch them play several games. But I think for the men it is having something with a firm foundation you're building and growing and developing. And yes, you'll use the portal for immediate needs, but I think long term to compete in the Big 12, you you you've got to you got to develop your guys. And so I'd want a guy also that could help develop bigs or develop guards or be in, be a part of the development part of building a foundation so you could compete in the pack in the big in the Big 12. My pie in the sky hopes are that it's Rick Smith or Dale Davis from the Pacers, <laughs> uh, former teammates. That ain't happening. We can't pay him enough, but uh, nor is there interest there probably. But, no, we'll see who it is. Steve, we appreciate the time, man. Great perspective. Thank you, as always. Thanks, guys. Take few, care. Few people have the courage to take a job after Jerry Tarkanian and go in to clean that up, and he left BYU to do that at Fresno State. Right. And, uh, outstanding coach, better man. When, when BYU opened the season in 2010-11 against Fresno State at home, yeah. and it wasn't on TV, that was the beginning of the end for BYU, tired of not being able to use BYU TV. Right. Because we didn't it, even have that game on Standing TV. O for, for yeah. Steve back as Untelevised. Fresno's untelevised. Untelevised. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going, it's going to be nice to be uh, independent in the WCC next it's year. It's been good. Yeah. It has been good. Yeah. Great interview. Coming up, uh, who gets today's elite voice? And today's rise and shout out to a pioneer. This is BYU Sports Nation. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare.
official medical provider for BYU Athletics. And BYU made such a difference in our lives, I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. families to survivalists so you guys are playing for ten thousand dollars trust me it is not going to be easy out there you're creating memories is priceless the other team just passed us go, 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 go. we're always there for each other sometimes you just have to tell yourself you're going to do it and hit it head on are we seriously out of water right now guys yes don't squish your so hot. i'm so hot You can do this! She always has it in her. She's so strong. Oh my gosh. This is the best time ever. Yeah. All right. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have accomplished all of this together. Woo! Win or lose, it's about family. Yeah. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio app. Or download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day as a BYU fan, is it concerning to see three coaches depart, or is it natural attrition? Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, is Steve Preston, that's at... Jerem made me change or something. We <laughs> talked about it yesterday. Yes, the world is ending. This is only the beginning. We will find out next week that the Big 12 move is actually a move back to the Mountain West. Pope's going to Kentucky. Kalani back to Utah. Jerem and Spencer are leaving to start Rick's College Sports Network. Listen, it's April 15th, not April 1st. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. 75th anniversary, Jackie Robinson became the first black player in the major leagues. That's celebrated today all around baseball. And on 42nd and Broadway in New York City, Jackie Robinson Way today, outstanding. Yeah, temporarily renamed. I love, I love that. 42 is such a great movie. Of course, Jackie Robinson, so influential. Le people don't really know that Jackie, went, one, went to UCLA, and two, was an All-American in three sports. Football, baseball, track. He was incredible. Steve Cleveland's father played with him. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, big baseball guy. We should have asked Steve about that. We should that. have asked him. Get him back on the line. We have 40 <laughs> seconds left in the show. We're good. And, of course, a rising shout-out to our guy Jeff Judkins. What a career he had uh, at BYU. We're going to miss him. And uh, I think he might be the most interviewed player or coach in BYU Sports Nation history, Dave. I think so. He's just, he just kind of wanders over here and... <laughs> <laughs> and he stays here for as long as Like, Jeff, lies. we didn't have you scheduled, but we'll put you on. No, I'm just kidding. Our thanks to today's guests, Kristen Kozlowski and Steve Cleveland. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Ryan Boyce. We'll see you tonight for men's volleyball against number one UCLA, 9 Eastern time. Go how, about we, how about we get a W? Let's get it.